Well, it's a miserable day in our eco zoo, but I think our habitat looks really cute. The uh, the orangutan and the uh, gibbon one. We've got the siamangs, the la gibbons, and the orangutans in here. And all of them are hiding currently. Oh, there you go. There's an orangutan. Is that our... That's our main man. It's our big boy. Still an outsider, I think. Still a hungry outsider, but he is... Oh, he's integrating. Ah, oh, perfect. I was worried he wasn't gonna... He wasn't gonna mix with the uh, the females, but it seems like he is. Look at the Siamangs running around like little weirdos. <laughs> Got really weird hands. I love it. All oh, really weird arms. Oh, Badger's died. Oh, bless him. Oh, boy. Well, that, that's time to get two new bears then, I think, because we were waiting on the bears. Let's get... Himalayan brown bear. We've got. I might just get the two slightly cheaper. They're both eight eight years old. Maybe we should get these two because they're quite cheap. Tell you what, I'm going to adopt both of them right now, and then we can send them to the zoo into the quarantine. I have to send to zoo, and then quarantine is right on the other side of the zoo uh, over here. Let's whack them in quarantine and we can get a couple of new bears in. That's perfect. I think we were also missing some proboscis monkeys from our Indian elephant slash proboscis monkey habitat. Oh my goodness, you are hungry. That's okay, you'll be fed soon. There's an- <gasps> Cupcake's grown up! <gasps> wow. Oh look, there's a little baby proboscis monkey! Little baby! Oh, so we must have had a male. I've just forgotten that we had a male. <laughs> oh no, you're injured. Okay, let's request the vet. And, uh, can we send you- no, there you go, let's take them to quarantine. And then they'll be in quarantine and we can sort them out there. Uh, the proboscis monkeys, yeah we do, we've got, we've got three females and one male, so actually we're absolutely fine. Now the other elephant in the room is our finances, which are not going amazingly right now. I think we focused a little too much on the animals and not enough on our guests or our staff. Um, so ignoring the purchases, because that's tidy, um, we do have quite a lot of ongoing expenses. And if you look at just like our staff costs alone, where's our overview? Um, we've got quite a lot of money in yearly wages. I think we may have too many staff members, um, especially like keepers and mechanics, which are quite expensive. So I'm gonna just go through now and just have a look at where everyone is and do a little bit of optimi optimization and unfortunately probably have to let a couple of people go, which I always feel really bad about, even though they are just, you know, pixels on a screen. I always feel personally responsible for um, the, their being, they're losing their job. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through now and, uh, and do that and just a little bit of optimization. I think we can probably cut, cause I mean a lot of these are like 3000 a year is quite a lot cause they're all fully trained up. And now that they are fully trained up, we don't really need as many of them. Um, it was more kind of a temporary patch. I think at the time when it was like, oh, not everyone's trained up, you know, two inefficient keepers are probably similar to one efficient, like fully trained up keeper. Um, so we need to go through, have a look at everyone and, uh, and do a little bit of optimization. We're going to do that now. Okay, we've done a little bit of tidying up, and by a little bit, I mean quite a considerable amount. I don't know when all of the uh, the wages are going to clear up. Probably when they actually like leave the zoo. But we've hired a con we fired a considerable number of staff here. Um, so it's a much more streamlined staff, uh, streamlined staff we have. And I think we also then need to focus on our guest needs. So we need to make sure that um, their hunger and thirst are increased. 
as well as their energy, which you can do with things like energy drinks or benches and, and things like that. We've, we've got pretty good bench coverage around, so I don't think that's the issue. We can maybe add some energy signs, but it, it look uh, energy shops, sorry, like energy drink shops. But it looks like the, the main thing is that they're really thirsty and really hungry. Um, so we need to add in more vendors. I know we've just fired some, but whenever you add in vendors, it, like uh, the facility it automatically comes with a vendor. So we'd have to fire someone anyway. Um, so it just makes sense to do it that way. And then we know we've got everyone we need for the existing thing. And then when they come with their own kind of food truck, that's how I imagine it. You know, they can run their own food truck. <laughs> oh, no, someone's died. Oh, one of our red pandas. Oh, no. Oh, you're about to. Oh, I, I prematurely. Oh, okay. Just going to be boxed. Oh, probably because you're high up on a thing. Well, that's very sad. Does that mean we're one panda? Or were you the last one? No, we're one panda. How old are you as well? Oh, they're only 8.5. Okay, that's that's still doable then for, for breeding, I think. I don't think that's too old. Let's go red panda. And have we got a female? We do, we've got a few. Oh, they're only... They're four. They're three. I'm going to go for this one. And send you to quarantine. Um, our bears are just passing quarantine now. We keep getting the challenge alerts, which is good, okay. Adopt and place six different habitat species. We're not really doing these. I know uh, some of you are saying in the comments that like the challenges are great at the start. Like it's it's fine to shoot for something, but at the later stages of the game, getting 2000 is literally nothing to us. We could sell some penguins from here and get way more than that. And in fact, it's probably about time we release some penguins because we have quite a few adults in here that uh, probably need to go. So I'm just going to release some penguins as well. Okay, there's 12 there. We can release for 615 credits. Not too bad. And another 20 for 1418. And then another 14 for 1146. So that's got our penguin numbers down quite a lot, which is good because it also reduces the cost to feed them. Though I'm not worried too much about that. Like animal food costs are a concern. Like they are something you need to consider. Um, in fact, they're not even included there. I think it's under animals. You can see their food. Yeah, you can see how much it costs, but it's not, you know, obviously some of the the bigger animals, like the Siberian tigers, are going to be more expensive now that we've got cubs. Like, you're feeding five of them. It's quite a lot. Um, but it, it's never, like, a crazy amount. Oh, look at them. Wow, look at them all here. They're all eating. What a, what a great moment to come in. <laughs> Oh, this game's so beautiful. Like, they're so pretty, aren't they? Our little tigers. And we've got... <gasps> Beanstalks died. Oh, no. Oh. No, don't look. Don't look. Little little baby boy. We have, who we haven't named. Now, I think you are well, now a young adult. I think your dad is... Are they in here? Okay, your siblings. Ah, oh, we must have got you in. You're a new female to breed with with uh, with Howard. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then we've got his son in here who's still a juvenile. Okay, that's fine. Um, we do need to... Oh, and one of our Oryx has just died. Oh, in the water. That is not... That's not a pretty sight. That's not a good time to go. <laughs> Let's have a look at our little Oryx. See if we've got any outsides or anything. No, the pack is... The, the herd is going strong. We've got a couple of babies on the way. We're doing great work in uh, conserving them which is actually really good so in quarantine we've got both of our bears have passed their, their quarantine and we can send them to the himalayan bears habitat we've got two new bears we also have a new red panda which i'm going to send to the red panda and cupcake i am going to Send to the trade center because I don't think I can release them from here. <laughs> uh, let's go animal trading. There he is. Oh, I think we might have to return him to habitat first. Okay, well, that's annoying. All right, we'll return him to habitat and then we can release him into the wild. Now, if we go on our heat maps, which you can do just by clicking H as well, or you can uh, click the lower left uh, button, you can go on to guest needs 
and then you can filter by what we want to know about our guests. So if we look at toilet, for instance, we can see who really needs the loo. <laughs> and if you've got like loads of, let's say there's like loads of red people like over here, then you know there's not a toilet over here and you need to sort that out. Um, whereas you can see that the people on this side of the toilet went to the toilet, like this side of the uh, carriage went to the toilet before they got on the ride and this side of people did not and now they're regretting it. So <laughs> um, you can kind of go around your zoo and have a look at where, where the need is. It looks like toilet coverage is pretty good actually across our zoo. I'm not actually concerned about that at all. But we do know that energy, um, hunger and thirst are ones where we're, there's room for improvement anyway. So let's have a look at, I mean, generally happiness. I think everyone is pretty happy. Um, if they're not, you can click on them and find out why. So there's lots of vandalism. So is that the case on a few people? Oh no, they're, they're really thirsty. Okay, we're just not meeting their needs properly. Um, but that's fine. It seems like thirst is a big thing for everyone as well. Um, and I've noticed that a number of the shops kind of, well, there's a lot of people here, but if we go to, um, let's go to thirst. There's a lot of demand around here, which I'm, perhaps we can service through this section here. Um, though it isn't quite, it isn't quite where they are. There's just not a lot of free space and all this land is quite hilly. So, you know, this is our natural kind of nature area, which is, we've all kept very natural and I don't want to disturb any of that in any way because that's kind of de defeats the purpose. Um, but we can definitely add some, add some facilities in um, to this area somewhere, even if we add in like another facility here um, that can service, because there's a lot of people coming through here. And I think, yeah, a lot of their needs still aren't being met properly. Um, so they've got thirst and hunger. Hunger's not quite so bad, although there's a lot more hunger around here. I think this area is kind of lacking um, because then the food court area is over here. So they could do with like a quick stop of maybe a food and a drink section. And then energy. Um, energy is actually pretty good going around like it doesn't even those on the other side of the park have good energy because I think we've you know putting the gondola in you know you can see all these people have high energy and they're getting right around the park and right around the zoo sorry yeah I'm not actually seeing any any problems here really there's there's a couple of people but it looks like they're sitting down so they're probably yeah they're just recharging currently and they're good to go other than that now, rain is an issue, but I think without doing a major rehaul and making most of the zoo inside, rain is just something that people have to put up with. Like we sell umbrellas in two different stores. There's one right here with, oh yeah. The, <laughs> this is something else you guys had mentioned that I didn't move the benches out of the way. I'm just gonna um, adjust where these benches are so that people don't have to walk through a bench to uh, get to a shop. Um, <laughs> it's not the ideal setup, uh, but now we've done that. Let, let's have a look at vandalism as well, because I don't want that to be a big issue, which is on crime. I was only a couple of things. There you go. We well, replaced all of it. There's 50 pickpockets in the zoo. We could maybe do with another, another security. I mean, we've only got one security member, but they just seem to be. They're, they're super happy walking their beat. They're like they're living living the dream. No issues. They've got low workload. So I don't fully understand <laughs> how. Um, do we have, we've got a heat map for crime, don't we? Let's have a look at it. Security and crime. Is this was thus been vandalized? Um, no. Oh, litter and habitats. Okay, that's not really happening. That's good. Cameras and guards. We've got pretty good coverage. It's not so much over here. But there's pretty good camera coverage, to be honest, around it. So I'm not, I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried. I'm just going to address the hunger and thirst needs of our guests. I'm going to do that first by adding a little something into this area here before moving on to add something up here for these guests here. And I'm, I'm hoping that's going to, that's going to contribute the most to this, this whole area. Now we can see we've got Gulpy Soda here and Information Center and Chief Beef. And then on the other side, we've got Water, I can see. Uh, pip shop water and another information center. So I think I'm going to add coffee and then another form of food in here because that's going to give uh, our guests energy as well as meeting their thirst needs.
Okay, so we've built like a bear bison um, facility. It needs power, I think, on one of the windows. I'm assuming that's why that one isn't on. Ah, yeah, it's just out of reach, but that's okay. We can um, we can quite easily uh, add that in. I think this could, to be honest, this could just move one tiny fraction closer if we turn this down to one meter. That pleases everyone. There we go. So we've just moved the solar panel to the other side because now that reaches everything we need. Um, and now everything is powered, which is great. Um, we have an animal talk without power. Ah, uh, it's just because the solar panel needs a bit of maintenance. That's okay. I'm not going to worry too much about these anymore. They just, they, you know, it's, it's only at 50%. It's not like it's broken or anything. They'll, they'll get fixed soon anyway. Um, I've just lost a Narlechwi as well. Bless. It's getting quite dark. Um, now, I know some of you had said about potentially adding lights. I think I might do that uh, later into the series. We're, we're close to the end now, really. Um, but... See, we've got a we've got a few lights. No, what are we talking about? <laughs> got a few lights right there. Um, but we will add some more lighting in. Oh, I'm gonna pause. Our Bengal tigers have grown up. Okay, that's not good. Ratchet is fighting with his dad. Right, we're gonna release you into the wild, my friend, and also release the other older bengal tiger the female wow you get some insane uh, conservation credits from that um we do need to revisit the elephant habitat as well just to make sure that they're not um then the, the new male is released because they have an additional male don't they oh he's being carried he's still on his way to the habitat okay and i think perhaps the other one to check would be our siberian tigers have they all grown up no they're still babies Okay, that's absolutely fine. We will leave it as it is then. And as a new day dawns, I think we're going to copy our little food store here and move it over to this section here and have another little uh, food section. What I'm going to do is slightly change it. I'm going to have it like here because the door's facing the staff area as well. Okay, so that's, we've added that in. Oh, there's a little bit of a, a fire back there. My goodness, the water treatment needs to be fixed. Um, we're just gonna add in uh, this to the work zone as well. Oh no, Bagheera's died. Oh, I'm a leopard. Oh, that's very sad. Oh, we're gonna have to get another Amur leopard. Um, oh, that's quite expensive. Oh, there's another. There's another one here that's not too, too expensive. Let's grab that one and send them to the zoo. And um, we're going to add them to quarantine. And look, the, our new facilities are hopefully already making money, which is what we want. Yes, they're starting to make money. <laughs> We're running a little bit low on cash, <laughs> but it's not too bad. I mean, we can always get a load or we could just uh, sell like one animal to another zoo. Um, and it would be absolutely fine. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned. I'm going to put the ticket price up as well to 65 and see if any guests complain and 35 for children. Um, just because it may help to save us. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, don't climb on the rock then if you can't get down. That's, that's a you problem. That's definitely not a me problem. Look how cute these elephants are just playing around. So you can see now we've massively cut our wages cost down from 175 to 145. So that's saved quite a bit. I don't know if it's going to be enough, but it's saved quite a bit. Um, I'm going to have a look at our research as well. we have been doing quite a lot of research, which is good. I think I'm going to take our vets off of research for now, just so that they can, uh, they can actually make sure that everyone's okay. <laughs> Go around, check up on our animals. Cause we've got some protesters here as well. Okay, you need to leave now because he's fine. <laughs> he was just stuck on a rock. There's nothing weird going on. He's not being mistreated in any way. 
Oh, and we've lost the wild water buffalo. Oh, they've lived quite a long time. Don't they? Good for them. Have we got enough tapers? I can see two in here. That That's kind of the maximum. So I'm hoping there's not any more. Ah, there is. Okay, well, we shall send... Well, we release you into the wild. Oh, for 20. Okay, perhaps we will... Oh, it's because they're not fertile. So... We'll re Which is worse? Releasing them into the wild when they're not fertile or selling them to another zoo? We may need to sell this one to another zoo. I'm going to put it in storage center. Another zoo is not going to be gassed about buying them, though, probably, because they, they usually want to use them for breeding. <laughs> and Raphael's died, one of our giant otters. Well, I think he was he might have been outside of the gender ratio, actually. Oh, my goodness. There are loads of otters. Wow. OK, so this is a problem. Um, they're elderly. Let's keep one non-elderly female and then we could sell the others to another zoo just to get a bit of cash in the meantime. So if we have a look at our animal trading now. Yeah, they're not, they're not. I'm going to release this one to the wild because another zoo's not really going to pay much for them anyway. And then we may have to look at trading them to another zoo. We can get quite a bit of money. So I may quick trade these. Let's say to another... Oh my goodness, got overcrowding. It's another conservation zoo. They're going to be looked after and then, uh, you know, they can breed themselves. Oh, okay, we've got outsiders. We've got outsiders. I'm going to also sell these on to another zoo. Oh, what was that? Quarantine pass, I think, on our leopard. I'm going to move them across. Okay, cupcake. Go to the trade center. And oh, Amma Leopard needs to go to their habitat, which I think is over here. There we go. It looks like our money is going up, although we are selling animals, so that could be why. We have a very strong negative, but this is this is all based on like the whole year, so it's quite hard to tell. We're about to hit a new year, so that might actually help us determine how we're doing. <laughs> I'm going to always grab a loan if we want and then use it to just to, to make more profit gaining activities, really. I mean, none of the guests are saying that the uh, the tickets are too expensive. So it may even be a good idea to actually put the zoo price up, the ticket price up again to something like 70 and 35. See how that does. Oh, does this mean we're making money? It's a new year. Are we making or losing? Oh, it looks like we're losing. <laughs> Okay, we can, oh, it's going down. Oh no, it's going back. And it's back at the green. Now we're making money. I think we may have reached kind of the equilibrium point and we're passing it now. It looks like we're making money. Let's have another look at our guest needs. Okay, the hunger is much better now. The thirst could still do with a little bit of work. There's still quite a few thirsty guests around here as well. And more over here. So perhaps it would be worth expanding and having another little guest area section here with some more facilities. I've just put another information center in here too because it's just by the child information point and I think that's really cute. Um, oh, this one's a little bit high on the uh, on the terrain. So we're going to have to adjust this one. Okay, so we've just added that in now as well. So it looks like people are already starting to use it. They're approaching now. So let, let's see how they do. Um, it can never hurt to have more. Oh my goodness, what is this? Oh, it's food. We need to change the food keepers. Come on, come on. Um, you can never hurt to have more, more of that. I think we need to check in on our donations as well. I'm not sure where how how our donations are coming in. Oh, we get seven thousand from donations. So that's actually quite a lot so far compared to like it's a, probably it's about a, a, just over a third of our income. A third to half somewhere in there of our income um, but our shop income is massively increased now so we are making money officially which is really good that's good to see 
Um, pretty much. I mean, when you're looking at finances in the game, I've just neglected it for ages. Um, so it's good to spend some time today and do, so do some more of that. But I mean, if you go facilities and then click on profits, almost all of the facilities, I mean, fair enough, they're losing 12, but that we put them right on the other side of the zoo. It's kind of giving accessibility. And I mean, I mean, we've got, I think we've got six shops. So it's two of six aren't making money. But even the ones that aren't doing that well make some money. Like they, they kind of cover their own costs. Um, so it is worth having them generally. Um, your vendors do cost an amount as well. So you have to kind of consider that too. But the, the vendors are very cheap. Like when you look at all our staff, they're um, they're incredibly cheap. It's 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 more the uh, the vets and the mechanics and the keepers that cost more money. Like a fully trained up vendor is only four hundred, and when you first get them, the I mean that's they're two hundred and thirty when you first get them. <laughs> so it's 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 not it's not a massive expense. It's it's quite easy for the facilities to make money, and as as our guests move around the zoo as well, there's going to be more profit to be made because they're going to use the facilities further around the zoo. So you can see we've improved our our hunger and thirst, and I think our energy is about the same, but hopefully that'll, that'll go up a little bit too, which is much better. The rain has stopped as well, which is gonna make our guests a bit happier, which is good. So hopefully these, these figures will just keep going up. Now, I think it's time we add in a seven width path coming off of here, right under the gondola track. And this is going to be where our last few habitats are. So I'm going to have this curve around like this. And then have it link up back with our path over here. Okay, so if you extend a little section out here, the animals we're going to be getting today are the western chimpanzees which are critically endangered now we're gonna need at least five. Oh my goodness at least five so let's grab the animals now oh we've got a few komodo dragons in our um in our trade center i think we may just be releasing the ah oh, cupcake is the indian elephant right okay um we can either sell the... I think we may just quick trade these to another zoo and get a little, a little hit of cash to help us build this habitat. Wow, okay. They are all quite expensive. So we're going to have to have a look at which ones we can afford. Um, I think it looked like it's mixed groups. Yeah, it's patriarchal. It's a very promiscuous mating system. So I think it's whoever can will. <laughs> um, let's, let's have a look at who we want to get. Um, some of them are much more expensive than others. Oh, and I was going to check how long do they live? They live to be uh 51 that's insane i didn't realize they lived that long wow okay um so let's let's have a look 22 is actually a reasonable age we're gonna get this female um there's another cheaper male here i'm gonna get to boost numbers that probably won't end up being our um, breeding male um there's another here another male of a reasonable price and then i think we're gonna get some more expensive um ones like 2,000 here. And that's four. Um, let's refresh the list and see if we've got any more. Yeah, there's another cheaper male. I just wanted some more females. There's quite an expensive female there, but we don't, we don't really need them. Let's get another male for now. And then at least we've got... Or should we... Okay, well, oh, no, they're 45. That's way too old. Goodness. Way, way, way too old. Let's get this male, and then at least we've got a, a like a compatible group of five five chimpanzees um, that we can use. So let's let's move all five of these to the quarantine. So now I think it's time that we start making our chimpanzee habitat. So I'm just going to lay out the barriers now to get kind of an outline of where we want them to be, and I need to be mindful of their area. So the western chimpanzees. Assuming we have a group of, let's say, 10 of them. Let's say there's, well, what group says they live in? Yeah, five to 10. Let's say, let's say there's 10 of them. And then there's also like five babies. We need to make sure we have at least 1500 meters squared after we put the trees in and any water areas. And we need to have quite a lot of climbing. So I'm going to do that 
um, with something I'm looking forward to making. So stay tuned for that one. Um, the grade three climb proof means we need to use at least wooden logs because they're grade three and we'll just make them all be climb proof and more than five meters squared. So I'm going to do that rather than use a purely water based um, habitat. You could just separate them with water if you didn't want any barriers. But I think that it will fit in with the theme of the rest of the zoo. It's going to be the same as the, the gorilla habitat opposite. And it's, you know, it's a sustainable material, so I don't feel bad by using it in an eco zoo. So I'm going to start laying out the barriers now. Okay, I think I'm quite happy with this shape. I started out with a massive habitat that was way too big um, and I've just slowly uh, calmed it down to a more appropriate size. Um, I do need to raise it up though to be five meters the whole way around. I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna have it be 5.7 and I'm just gonna add climb proofing to both sides of the habitat so they definitely can't get out. Um, now I do actually need to make it be glass on some of the sides of the habitat and I think I might just extend a little path down here so the guests can continue to look at the chimpanzees down here. There we go, we've got these nice big viewing angles into the habitat now, which should be good. We can always extend a path around if we need to, but I quite like that this gives them a bit of privacy along the back of the habitat. I think we're just add, gonna add a little bit of terrain editing as well. We normally try and minimize it for its like ecological impact, but uh, this area is very flat and I'm not sure the chimpanzees are really gonna thank us for that. So I'm just gonna change the area very slightly around here. We've just created a bit more of a hilly terrain there, so that's something a bit more interesting and it gives us a basis on which to build our uh, our little climbing areas, which I'm excited for in this habitat. Now we do need to play the game to let our finances go up, but also to let our chimpanzees go through quarantine and come out the other side. So, oh, it's just started to rain as well, so that'll be nice and fun for our building. Oh no, animals have died. Oh, we've lost an African dog and we've lost a... Uh, Oh, I've forgotten how to say it now. <laughs> the horses. We've lost coconut. Oh, bless you. Oh, the vet is being called currently. How are our horses getting on? I think they're doing a pretty good job. No, I'm not going to let myself get distracted. I am going to go straight back through the rain to our chimpanzee habitat and finish this off. <laughs> So we can see that the chimpanzees are from Africa and they like the tropical biome. So I'm gonna start adding in some rocks and some plants and some climbing areas that are appropriate for them whilst this horrible rain carries on. And I may need to pause so the rain doesn't distract me too much because it's quite a lot.
And here's right about when I realized we were out of cash. <laughs> so I realized we kind of needed to rework our finances. And I decided I'd start off by kind of optimizing our food spending. Because I realized that for some habitats like the gorillas, it's quite a lot. And we could just reduce our animal numbers slightly and it would save thousands off of the, the finances. And you guys warned me about the Gariel babies and I completely forgot there's an insane amount of them. So I'm just going to stop the breeding for now. I think we've bred enough for an entire conservation zoo's full existence. So <laughs> they're fine for now. So I also gathered up all of the outsiders in the zoo or animals that were siblings that needed to be either be released or to be sold to another zoo. And I decided I would just sell them to another zoo. And again, let's just assume that they're another breeding zoo. Uh, but that gave us a nice hit of about $50,000 which we could use to start building in some more profit generating facilities and things like that. And I was a little bit more ruthless with our staff. Also, I decided I would just start charging a very small amount for the transportation rides because they do cost quite a lot and it's not going to make the difference either way really, but uh, I figured a dollar isn't a ridiculous amount of money to spend on a ride like that, so I, I didn't have an issue with charging that. And then I thought it would probably be a good idea to add in some more guest facilities because our guests are still hungry and thirsty, so I don't know what we're doing to them in this zoo, but they get super hungry and thirsty and we need to make sure we're there for them. So I add another little guest facility section at the entrance of our zoo. And I add some guest facilities to the island side of our zoo. And then I decide to add another guest facility section to the Asia side of our zoo. And then I sorted out all the staff work zones again. And then I realized that we spent so much time focused on the money and not enough focused on the animals of this episode, which was the Western chimpanzees. So I thought we'd have a little look at them in their habitat. Wow, look at the chimpanzees. They're finally in. Oh, they're so cute. Okay, well, this episode has probably gone long enough. So I think it's time that we wrap up their habitat by making it the right terrain and adding in the plants that they need and also adding in their enrichment. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, that is looking much better for them now. So they've got a massive area, they've got lots of climbing, they're happy with the nature and they've got enough enrichment. Um, oh, they need some more toys. Oh, we can add some more toys in. I think they just probably want some more of the same. Um, let's add another box in. 
or perhaps we need to unlock some more toys because we've not got many toys we've just got a lot of uh yeah we've got a lot of food enrichment and uh climbing enrichment which isn't the same so we may need to unlock some more toys for them but that looks pretty good for them as it is now i think we could add a little bit more bedding in And look at them just chilling in their fort. How cute is that? <laughs> well, I think in the next episode, we're going to add some more education, which is going to boost our donations and hopefully help us financially recover. Um, but I'm going to leave that for the next episode. So I hope you've liked this episode. If you have, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out. And I'll see you in the next one.